Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. So my next interview is about a film that normally I probably wouldn't be attracted to, but when I saw the trailer, when I read the synopsis of the film, I mean, I was drawn in. It's, it's, I've, I've tagged this a socially conscious piece of science fiction. How's that? It sounds, you know, um, like a film that, 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 that's going to take you and, and, and turn you inside out. There's, there's a, there's a, it's a mix of genres. There's a little bit of horror in there. There's a bit of a thriller going on. We've got, we've got great dialogue, amazing performances, Emile Hirsch and Bruce Dern, Grace Park. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a fun, it's a fun and beautiful film to watch, but it's, it's also a film that has uh, some significant uh, political commentary and, and social commentary, and it's speaking to, to, to a whole lot of things. So I was uh, fortunate enough to interview Zach Lepofsky and Adam Stein uh, to talk about this this new film, Freaks, and uh, it's got great great music. It's an Am- American Canadian production, and it's it's kind of hard to put your finger on. As I mentioned earlier, we talk about um, um, you know permanent residency. We we talk about vision and about about people making a difference, about fear and persecution, and 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 about being authentic. And 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 we talk about this idea of, of what it is to, to be an alien and, and, and feel, uh, well, in the, as you'll see in the film, um, they talk a great deal about uh, ab- abnormals. And one of the things that, uh, that, that they both talked a great deal about was some of these thematic elements, they just kind of creep up on you. And isn't that what life is really all about? And isn't that us, you know, stepping into the future, stepping into this, um, this reality, even though this is, you know, as I said, it's this piece of science fiction or narrative fiction, it's still speaking to a greater truth. And isn't it wonderful that, you know, we can watch a film like this, enjoy it, and still peel back some layers and and, uh, and have a great time. So coming right up, uh, Adam Stein and uh, Zach Lepofsky talking about their new film, Freaks. Don't forget davidpecklive.com for more information about my writing and my public speaking. You can get a copy of Real Changes Incremental there on Amazon. I believe it's there anyway. I hope it is. And uh, face-to-facelive.ca, we have so many more interviews there to choose from. I've had a great time. I uh, haven't spent quite as much time at the Toronto International Film Festival this year, but I have enjoyed the time that I've been there. And I'll probably be talking a little bit more about some of those favorites uh, down the road. Uh, face-to-facelive.ca, you can you can get behind us and support us. Uh, we are growing. Patreon.com to, to, to uh, support us monthly financially. If you can do that, we sure would appreciate, appreciate it, helping us to get word out on the street, interviewing some really amazing uh, people doing some wonderful things around the wor- world. And, and if you can't do that, which we totally understand, if you could leave us a, a review on, on, on iTunes or Spotify or one of those usual digital sub, uh, suspects, that would be great. You can also advertise on Face to Face. Reach out to us if, if you're interested, uh, banner ads and so on. Share uh, the, uh, this with your friends. Sign up for the newsletter, folks. Uh, uh, please help us spread the word. And don't forget, I also appear face-to-face, also appears on, on rabble.ca. It's news for the rest of us. Alternative news uh, media agency uh, online doing some great work and, and, and digging deeper, peeling back those layers. Bloggers, podcasters, writers, um, make sure you look them up, rabble.ca. And don't touch that dial. Coming right up, an interview about this wonderful, fun, and engaging new film, Freaks, Zach Lepofsky and Adam Stein. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We're joined by two uh, two very special guests from, um, well, actually, I'm not exactly sure where anybody is except myself. So I'm sitting here just outside of Toronto. I've been hanging out at the Toronto Film Festival for the last little while. We've got uh, Zach Lepofsky and Adam Stein here to talk to us today about their new film coming out later this week, Freaks. Guys, thanks for taking the time to uh, chat with me today on Face to Face. <laughs> Thank you Absolutely. so much. Thanks so much. It's awesome. So I'm in so, Vancouver and Adam's in LA. So oh, there you the go. <laughs> so we've got we've got North America fairly well covered. 
it's a, it's not, not, not a bad place to be. So, so, so let's dive right in. Um, you know, my listeners know, uh, I, I want to talk about the issues. I want to peel back the layers, but let's, let's talk a little bit about just about the film itself. Freaks, uh, congratulations. Um, it's, it, it I love the film. It, it, it's fun. It's, it's gorgeous to look at. Um, uh, but I want to ask you, uh, what it, what you wrote on the script, what you had on the script, and what you saw eventually, you know, on film and in the editing studio, are they the same things? Did did they line up? This and and by the way, this is this is an American Canadian production, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it was basically Adam and I production. <laughs> and Adam and I, right? Yeah. Got it. And I'm, I'm, I'm American uh, originally. Um, I've actually just got my uh, Canadian permanent residency. Um, because I've I've spent the last four years working up in Vancouver with Zach, and just love it up there, and uh, decided to bring my family there. So nice. Um, I have my permanent residency now, but uh, yeah, the the movie was was really just a, a passion project for Zach and me from the beginning. We wrote the script, not knowing if we'd ever have any investors, so we wrote a movie that we could make for no money if we ended up having no money. Um, and it, it definitely evolved as we went. It went through many, many drafts, like and um, but the but and, and editing, you know, changes. But the vision never changed. We knew from the beginning what kind of movie we wanted to make, um, and the the changes that happened were just to kind of sharpen that and hone it and make it more satisfying for audiences. So would you guys? So that's interesting. You you always knew what kind of movie you wanted to make because I I'm not sure what genre I would stick this in. I mean, it's kind of drama. It's it's science fiction. It's thriller. I mean, I actually came up with the phrase, and I don't know if this is mine. Probably not. But socially conscious science fiction is is that a fair? Yeah, that's Love very that. cool. Love that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, some people have described right. the film as like the uh, kitchen sink of genre because it, it has <laughs> right. all sorts of different genres in it. We didn't really think of genre when we were writing it. We just, you know, we love all genres. And, and I think our favorite movies are the ones that they make you think, they make you laugh, they make you cry, you're excited, you're nervous, you're, you're afraid, you're, you're screaming for bloodlust, and then you're sad when someone dies. You know, we wanted, we wanted all the rainbow of emotions. And, and, you know, that came through in the film mostly because the film's told through the perspective of this little girl. And just, we we kind of decided early on that we'd be really faithful to that perspective. So whatever she's feeling is the genre. When she's scared, it's a horror film. Mm. When she's running for her life, it's an action movie. Uh, and when she's experiencing wonder, you know, it's a Spielberg movie. So it's, it's, it's all true to her perspective. We even shot the movie from like two and a half feet off the ground. So all the angles nice. of the movie are from her height. Yeah, that's cool. Hey, and that's you... how we approach the, the narrative, too, you know, because it's, it's a bit of a mystery, right? So you don't know what's going on at first because she doesn't know what's going on. Right. And uh, the audience finds out information as Chloe finds the information out. When you guys, uh, you, I, is the, I'm pretty sure the establishing shot in the film is, is, is Chloe's eyeball. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's an extreme close up of her yeah. eye. Yeah. Little 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 homage and, and there also to Blade. And the last shot of the movie. Little little homage there to Blade <laughs> well, Runner by no. any chance? Actually, we we uh, we actually had um, already been. Uh, I think we had already been filming um, when Blade Runner came out, and we saw that we were like, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's but hilarious. you know, eyes are a constant scene in, course, uh, yeah. in Freaks. Uh, right. Um, yeah. Oh, I see. And, yeah, yeah. Of course they are. Know, yeah. So, yeah, so so you know the, the sort of the 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 eye is a motif throughout the movie, um, but we also were very much interested in kind of starting and ending the movie mm. with a similar view of her face and her eyes, even though she's changed a great deal from the beginning to the end. The the final shot of the movie shows a close up of her of her face that goes into her eye as well. Um, and, and we actually do that a couple times in the movie mm. um, as she's changing, um, you know, seeing how, how she's become a different person. Yeah, we also picked it because of that, that idea of perspective. You know, the whole movie's from her perspective, so you start with a shot of her eye to kind of 
that's the beginning of you know where the perspective starts. Well, I love to, you know, I love to, you know, what's the, what's the cliche or the line, eyes are the key to the soul or whatever. I mean, even if you don't believe in a soul, the meaning of the, the idea that it's through the eyes that you, you know, you express your humanity, you, you, you dive into it, uh, you, 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 you see truth in it and authenticity. And isn't that a kind of a part of what you guys are talking about in this film? Yeah. I mean, we, we tried to take, you know, the, the film is a sci-fi thriller. That's kind of how we define it. But we wanted to, to take a tone that was very different than a lot of kind of sci-fi stuff or, right. or action-y stuff. We wanted it to feel very, very, very real and authentic, just mm-hmm. like you said. We wanted it to feel like almost a documentary of something that was happening for real. Um, you know, we didn't, we didn't want it to have the, the high gloss fancy and sort of predictable nature of sort of big budget spectacle driven type things. We wanted it to be this. Even though there's very science fiction-y stuff going on, you know, there's, there's yeah. special effects and everything, but always making it feel very photographic, like you just happen to capture it. Yeah. So it was sort of capturing that authenticness through how we shot it and also through the performances. We worked really hard to try and make sure the performances felt completely natural and real. Um, compared to something that was written with, you know, fancy one-liners and stuff like that. So, so just before I ask you a question about Adam, about I think it's really interesting, Adam, that you talked about permanent residency, because I mean, are, isn't isn't that a part of what Freaks is all about as well? I mean, this just this idea of of being an outsider <laughs> coming in, you know. Uh, you know, abnormals, uh, yeah. uh, uh, new Canadians, you know, if right, uh, immigrants and so <laughs> on. And this, this, right. is, this does seem to be the global issue right now, or at least one of the global issues of our time. I find it pretty interesting that that's kind of a, whether it was intentional or not, I'm guessing it was, but it's really quite a, quite a beautiful underlying tone to the film. Yeah, well, we, we knew that the world of our film was about fear Mm. and about um, persecution and the the sort of timeless um, question that that keeps recurring in human history of when people are different mm. um, you know it should and and in, it, when people are different in a way that society doesn't like and it's dangerous to be who you are what do you do do you hide who you are in order to remain safe or do you stand up for who you are and fight for fight for that identity um and that's kind of the central theme of the movie um and you know it was inspired by a lot of things it was definitely um we were starting to write it during the trump campaign when he you know famously kicked off his campaign with with a lot of um xenophobic um, rhetoric with with and with the, and you got from... you, you got to do a shout out for the 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 escal the down escalator. I mean that is just like one of the yeah, most oh, that, classic anti publicity yeah, shots of all time, yeah. right? It was just <laughs> ridiculous. So strange, um, but uh, yeah, I mean that was kind of there was also a more personal sort of family inspiration. You know, I grew up going to a Jewish school. Mm. Um, where every day, basically, we would hear stories about the Holocaust and the ways, particularly that children um, survived in the Holocaust. Sometimes their families would try to pass them off as normal and put them with other families. Mm, And that kind of inspired one of the storylines in the movie. Um, But, you know, in terms of the, the Trump campaign rhetoric, mixed with that, mixed with all kinds of other, you know, times throughout history where this has happened again and again, where people yeah, we talked are, about, are feared. Yeah. We talked a lot about um, the residential schools in Canada as mm-hmm. well, hmm. and where basically kids were separated from their families because they were different. And, you know, that's kind of a dark part of Canada's history. Sure. But every country kind of has these these very similar moments that have happened over and over again in all different parts of the world. And when the film came out at the Toronto Film Festival last year, it was just as kids were being separated from their families and put in camps in the U.S. And people were sort of like, how did you know this was going to happen? Right. 
you know, and it was just that we had, we didn't know what was going to happen. We thought it was going to be science fiction, but we had just looked through all these different we things that happened, happened before, in the past. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> That's the reason we, we didn't know it was going to happen right now, but it's happened so many times in the past that, that, you know, it, it's, it's really sad that it's happening again. Well, you know, what's kind of interesting to me too. I mean, isn't, isn't a great story is, isn't great art sometimes uh, you you look back on it and you go wow th- those guys were onto something and and even I mean, and isn't that about sort of the you know for me freaks is is about making choices and some 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 of them are good and some of them are bad and about making choices in the middle of, in the middle of uh, you know this big fat mess that's exploding around you and and your true character comes out i mean i i, I that's what i love about about films that sort of on the surface don't seem to say much or teach much, but yet when you just peel back a layer or two, you, you start to see the the nuances and the subtleties. And I, I I don't know. I think that's how about how about prophetic, socially conscious science fiction? How's that? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you. You're gonna need a few more hyphens. That's right. That's um, right. Yeah. I, hashtag <laughs> socially conscious or something. I don't know. I don't know what's the hashtag for that. I don't know. I'll have to. Well, ask you Kevin. know what's yeah. what's interesting about the. The thematic um, stuff that you're talking about in the film sort of sneaks up on you. It, you know what? Um, that's great. You don't I know that that. That, yeah. that that's part of it at the beginning. Um, at the beginning, it's just a story about this girl and her father. Right. And then it's a story about a family trying to just survive and help each other. Um, and it isn't until halfway through the movie or towards the end of the movie where you kind of where where all that stuff comes to the fore or you realize oh my gosh this is this is like our world um and and that's something we sort of intended because one of the things we really wanted to do with the movie is make it personal right. make it really nice true about these characters emotional and sometimes with socially conscious films of all types sci-fi and otherwise they can be a little preachy right and they can kind of start at you with a with a monologue about you know what's going on in the world and how this isn't right um and we really just wanted people to get wrapped up in the story of these characters to be on the journey with them and to feel as they were feeling um because we thought the messages would be much more effective if if that if we were able to achieve that it's good yeah no i think i mean to me you know as you were chatting about that i just thought of uh, this is a great film that if, if people had a film club and believe it or not, I'm nerdy enough to have been a part of something like that in the past where, you know, you get together, you have dinner, you watch a film, you chat about it. This is a great one because it's fun. It's entertaining. It's, it's, it's a, it's multi genre like, and, and, the, and, and there's tons to talk about, which I, I love that you said it, it, it kind of sneaks up on you. Hey, Hey, I, I found it interesting. Yeah. Another how, element yeah, yeah, go, like yeah. that, that w- just one small thing that was an element that spurs conversation is, when we wrote the film, we really wanted to make sure all the characters were never evil or good, <laughs> that mm. they all, even the lead character, they all are in this sort of messy gray zone where you totally understand why they're doing what they're doing. Right. But at the same time, sometimes you hate it and sometimes you love it and characters that you are fearing, you end up loving. And, and even the little girl who you're, who you're basically rooting for the whole movie by the end, you could probably stop the movie and have a few glasses of wines with your <laughs> with your friends and debate sure. uh, who she who she's become. Right, right. And that was something we, we we were excited by was sort of this idea that there are characters. You know, so much in movies nowadays, someone's just a good guy or a bad guy, and right. you just sort of know the good guy is going to defeat the bad guy or something. Little, little, and yeah, we little wanted everyone wants. to to be in the middle. Yeah, that's good. Hey, we got to wrap it up in a couple of minutes here, but but I, I did a w- great cast, by the way, and I I, th- I mean so many great one liners and 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 soundbite like uh, pieces from the script. It seems to me, but I gotta say, Emil Hirsch's line uh, uh, near the end of the film, <laughs> "Get away from my house, or I'm going to melt all your brains with my freak powers," is is definitely going up there as one of my faves of all time. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's hysterical. Hey, why did you give? I think it was, is it Grace Park's character, Cecilia? Why did you give her the line, abnormals, I don't believe they're evil? I just thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, um, that idea came from the idea that 
sort of nurture versus nature. Mm. Um, you know, that basically society has, has become a cycle of violence. Mm. So they've said this group of people are, are illegal and they have to then do things because they're illegal to survive, which then make them even more illegal, which makes them have to do even more bad things to survive. And so her perspective is if she could break that cycle, even though she's an antagonist, if she could break mm. that cycle and, and basically get someone who at the moment they're born before society has, has pushed them to make choices that can't be undone. If she could break that cycle, maybe she could make someone who benefits society. Now, of course she fails and <laughs> to a degree, but well, it's, she's, it's, she's it's, an it's, interesting, interesting example. Yeah. She's an interesting example of that. Neither being all bad or all good. Right. I mean, she's an antagonist and she ends up being very dangerous but she thinks she has a um, positive social goal um, from her perspective. Sure. And you yep. can kind of see what she's talking about. Yeah, oh, totally. Which we wanted to do. I mean, she's for the villain to have a, a, a perspective that you understand and can get. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it, it just makes it feel a little bit more nuanced. Isn't there, doesn't she also have the line when, when mom is, is sort of freed something about my, my God, what you're freeing or what a waste. Like just, just to talk about the different perspective. Yeah. Yeah. uh, She, that line refers to you're freeing, you know, freeing um, mom, Mary. Yeah. Um, And so now, now I have to kill you. That's right. That's what right. What a waste that what I have a, to what, kill. What a waste this could have been. But, but <laughs> you had so much. <laughs> you had so much potential. Yeah, it's just it's so cool that just that it it, it it is a really interesting comment on on worldview and perspective because who who am I to say that you're right or you're wrong, right? I mean, it's 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 really 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 quite quite fascinating. Well, so thanks for all your detailed thoughts about it. Yeah, Very listen, cool. I had a, had a lot of fun, and it's it's the kind of film like I, like I said, it's the kind I, I, you, you're going to have fun watching, but 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 lots lots to chat about afterwards for sure. And and I so love the, uh, Chloe's line to Bruce Stern: "Are are we safe? Are we safe? Isn't isn't that really uh, what it what it's all about?" Th- thanks a lot for your time uh, today, guys. I, I re- really do appreciate it. We've been talking with Zach. Thank you so much. This Zach. is a really great conversation. We've been chatting with Zach Lepofsky and Adam Steiner with their new film, Freaks. You need to go and see it. It's coming soon to a theater near you. I re- really appreciate your time today, guys. Yeah, thank you thank so much. You. Really appreciate it.